it had slight sweep back on the wings, 18 degrees of sweep. And it had many innovative features. For example, it had powered controls on the ailerons, which were unusual. We didn't have that at that stage in the war in any Allied aircraft. Now Luftwaffe officials are eager to take another look. When Dornier tells Milch that the aircraft flies at over 470 miles per hour, the Air Force chief, knowing Dornier is a man of his word, agrees to the project. It is there where the contract is given to the aviation genius to make 20 arrows that the 335 is born. It had slight sweep back on the wings, 18 degrees of sweep. And it had many innovative features. For example, it had powered controls on the ailerons, which were unusual. We didn't have that at that stage in the war in any Allied aircraft. And with the reverse thrust on the prop, you could cut the landing run by about 25%. Looking at the A1 version of the 335, many are impressed by this fighter-bomber combination. The Dornier 335 was a very innovative aircraft indeed, and I find it quite fascinating. When you see it on the ground, it is a huge as a fighter. The great weakness of the Nazi, if you like, bureaucratic system was that the left hand never knew what the right hand was doing. There were far too many projects being mismanaged. <laughs>